So in connection with Carmelo Anthony announcing his retirement, we threw together a list of the sport's best one-and-done players. The list we published um, is not exactly the way I would have done it. I know it's not exactly the way you would have done it. But at number one on that list, published at CBSSports.com, is former Kentucky star Anthony Davis. Is it clear to you he should be number one? Clear? Um... Not clear. I think there's a real debate to be had. Do you want to go this? Do you want to do this one down to the bottom? You want to you want to go reverse order here? You well, to- yeah, let's just take it from the top. Um, okay. I, I've, I, got, I've got Davis one. I think I probably would, too, because he checks every box. He was the best player in the country who also won a national championship. He averaged 14.2 points, 10.4 rebounds. I didn't remember this part. 4.7 blocks. I remember that part. <laughs> I mean, yes. that's, a, that's outrageous um, for a team that won the national championship. My favorite thing about that team is that Anthony Davis and Michael Kidd Gilchrist mm-hmm. went first and second in the NBA draft and were fourth and fifth in shots, shots on the season yeah. at Kentucky. Trivia time. Who led Kentucky in shots that year? Um, Bledsoe? Not on the team. Oh, wasn't on the 12 team? No, Bledsoe was on the 2010 team with John Wall. Got Devin Downey, Wait, what you might doing? remember. Um, yeah, that's true. Uh, so, Kid Gil- uh, I actually thought Davis was sixth. Um, it was, I believe they were fourth and fifth. Okay. Uh, so, 11, 12, that would have In fact, been, I know they were fourth and fifth. I've got the number. Oh, uh, um, Terrence Jones was on that team. He was second on the team in shots, 354 on the season. Kid Gilchrist, Davis, Terrence Jones... Um, Deron Lamb was on that team. I'm going to say Deron Lamb is the answer. 369 shots. Deron Lamb led Kentucky in shots that season, followed by Terrence Jones, then Marcus Teague, then Marcus Anthony Teague. Davis. Of course, I always forget about Teague. Then Marcus Teague. It was Anthony Davis. Michael Kidd Gilchrist was fifth. So they all took in the 300s, but it is true. Anthony Davis and Michael Kidd Gilchrist were First and second in the draft, but fourth and fifth in shots on their own team. If you value like the total package, statistically dominant national player of the year who also won a national championship, yeah, sure. Um, Anthony Davis deserves. If you you take the whole thing into account, Anthony Davis probably deserves to be labeled as um, the player who had the greatest one and done season ever. Here is how I'm defining this. I'm defining this as the best one and done players. OK, so with that, I am taking into how good you were as a player, your statistical accomplishments. And s- uh, n- this doesn't have an overwhelming amount of weight. But the fact that Anthony Davis won the national title is why I put him first. Yes. Consensus first team All-American freshman of the year, player of the year, final four mop, number 12 all time in PER, according to sports reference, uh, and also averaged a steal and a half per game while shooting 62.3 percent from the floor. He and then became the number one pick because of all this. He was the best one and done player, in my opinion. Number two, I have Zion Williamson. Okay. Zion Williamson, it feels like because his NBA career has been such a disappointment so far that people are starting to try and rewrite just how ridiculous he was. Consensus first team All American freshman of the year player of the year the single season all-time efficiency record and that goes back to 0203 at college sports reference so you know i'm walton and and uh alcinder probably have that but for the data we have it's zion he's one oh by the way Edie is now two with the season he just had zion averaged 22.6 points 8.9 snags 2.1 assists 2.1 steals 1.8 1.8 blocks, shot 68% from the field, 38% from three, was an upper-tier defender, and the biggest force on both ends of the floor combined, in my opinion, that the sport had seen in an era. He did it for a Duke team that was seeded number one, had a fellow elite draft pick on the team. His name escapes me at the moment. Yes, R.J. They lost the- Barrett. R.J. Barrett. They lost in the lead eight to Michigan State, um, and he lost five games to injury. If you told me right now I had any player when they were in college to have on my team, you know, the classic, we're on a playground. I have everyone. I got Carmelo three. I'm taking Zion. Zion Williamson was a more dominant college player than Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo Anthony, again, he had the more significant career. He had the championship. 
Carmelo Anthony was not a better pl- college player than Zion Williamson, who won player of the year. Carmelo did not, nor should he have. If Zion and Duke would have won a national championship, is Zion atop this list now? He's atop the list if Duke wins the title. Yes, I, th- I think so, too. Um, you went through everything. He was just an absolute monster for a team that was the a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Um, totally reasonable to have him at number two. Number three on the list that we published at CBSSports.com was Carmelo Anthony. We've been through that. Makes well, sense. hold on real quick on this, though. Here's the, here's, here's the thing on Melo. Shot 45%, 33.7% from three. He was good, but he wasn't overly efficient. Here was the first team that season. Nick Collison should have been first team. TJ Ford. Definitely first team. Dwayne Wade, definitely first team. David West, unquestionably first team. But the one guy that made first team that should not have been on it, Josh Howard from Wake Forest. If you go and look at Howard's stats, he was a senior. It was obviously held against Carmelo Anthony that he was a freshman. In retrospect, this is like this is like a movie that, or, you know, an Oscar list of best movies and, and one that's still relevant 15 years later, didn't even make the list versus something that, you know, that uh, or did make the list versus something that, you know, is very popular now that didn't at the time. Josh Howard was a really, really good college player. Should not have been first team that season over Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo is third on my list, although there have been when we posted that list. A lot of people think it should be Carmelo number one. And I get why. Again, I think that speaks to more how he did it, when he did it and the significance, the sim- the symbolism with all that. But Carmelo Anthony was not a better college player than Zion Williamson or Anthony Davis. No, and that's the thing. Like, Melo can be high on this list because he did win a national championship as the undeniable best player as yes. a one-and-done uh, student athlete. But Anthony Davis also won the championship and was statistically better. Um, I, you know, uh, Zion was statistically better even if – he didn't win the national championship. So I'd be comfortable if you want to move Melo up to number two, but I don't think there's any intelligent argument you can make that Melo should be ahead of Anthony Davis on a list like this. I agree. Number four, and this is a guy, if like winning matters, so I, you know, it's why Anthony Davis would top my list. And if Zion had won a title, he would be ahead of Anthony Davis. The, the What you do from a team perspective should matter, and it does. But if the question is simply, who was the most awesome statistic? Who was the most awesome college basketball player as a one and done? You can make an argument for Michael Beasley. And this is the like while this debate was going on in Slack, I was doing another show. So I didn't have too much time to get into it. I was preoccupied. But I did argue that Beasley should have been higher. And I think you did too than he initially was listed and should definitely be higher. Then Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant was the flashier one and done. Michael Beasley was better. Michael Beasley was a better college basketball player than Kevin Durant. This is so we'll do both here. So on my list and on the list that that was tweeted out on the CBS Sports CBB Twitter account and all on social, it is Beasley four, Kevin Durant five. I think that's fair. And I think this is the upper tier. These are the five best if you want to switch the orders whatever but we're going to tell you why Beasley needs to be four and Durant needs to be five Beasley consensus first team all-american and freshman of the year did not win national player he the should have he should have only because Tyler Hansborough Hansborough got it but the, and should he have though GP yes no no Beasley I voted Beasley national player of the year he should have been national player of the year all right so K-State was 21 and 12 and 11 seed that didn't reach the second weekend Carolina went to the final four. Traditionally, you would vote for Hansborough on that spot, but you did not that season. Has, UNC was no. a one seed. UNC no, was I, a one seed. Dude, you take Michael Beasley That's and right. put him at North yeah. Carolina and take Tyler Hansborough and put him at Kansas State, and I, I think Beasley still went in a national championship. Okay. okay. Well, by, by, win, the way, by the way, by the way, yeah, yeah, yeah they, they went to the final four. Put yeah. Beasley on that North Carolina team, and I think they're going to the final four, and you put Hansborough – on uh, that Kansas State team, and I think they're doing about what Kansas State did. Oh, that's a great what if. Um, probably true. Beasley's numbers obviously would not have been as good because they were outrageous. Outrageous. First of all, his win shares, 10.74, is the fourth most since 95, 96, period. And not among freshmen, among any player per sports reference. 26.2 points, 12.4 rebounds. Um, just outrageous. I think because... It's K-State. They weren't a great team. Now, Beasley, like, if you are under the age of 25 and listen to this podcast, first of all, we love our young crew, shouts. You, you, 
you really probably can't appreciate just how absurd Michael Beasley was at Kansas State. Like, it was every damn night. I don't think there's an argument, personally. It's Beasley above KD because, GP, as you well know and have written about and talked about, KD came on the scene and was incredible. And then what happened a year later, GP? Beasley broke all his records. He broke all the records. And it's not like he narrowly got past them. He beat all of them easily. It's not It's not deniable. It's because it's K-State and because they weren't even like a five or a six seed. They were 11. I think that's why he gets a little less credit all these years later than he should. Michael Beasley, number four, one and done player on my list. I average, to average 26.2 points, 12.4 rebounds, 1.6 blocks. So KD set all these freshman Big 12 records and then – Beasley came in right behind him and broke him. He averaged more points than KD, more rebounds than KD, and he did it for a similar type of team in the same league. You know, Texas finished 25th at Ken Palm in 2007. Kansas State finished 26th at Ken Palm in 2008. So KD was flashier, but Be Easy was statistically the better player. I agree. It should be Beasley, four, Durant, five, and then I think I also agree that the guy who was listed at six should be six, and that's Jalil Okafor. Average 17.3 points, 8.5 rebounds, 1.4 blocks, and won a national championship. Um, he was the best player as a freshman on a national championship team. I, I think if we're trying to figure out the list of people who've done that, and is it? We've talked about them all. Yeah, it's Carmelo and Anthony. One and, it's one and done players. There are three of them. Yes. Yeah, it's Kev. It's uh, it's uh, Carmelo Anthony. It's Anthony Davis, and it's Jolly Local for his NBA career. You know, went the way it went, but he was an awesome college player. And yeah, like sixth on this list is probably where he belongs. I don't want to just rush past KD entirely. I get to both of these guys. One, KD was the first freshman to win consensus national player of the year. Not insignificant. Um, that was also major. And then Durant, when he, when Durant was doing what he was doing, um, it, he really became a sensation. So in my opinion, the four one and done players that felt like they culturally mattered the most, we've now all talked about Zion, Mello, AD Durant, I think are the four that just created the most interest and attention on college basketball. That being said, I have KD behind Beasley. And then I have Okafor six. So I do have Okafor six because a consensus first team All-American, freshman of the year, ACC player of the year, and average 17.3 points, 8.5 rebounds, 66.4% from the floor. And what Paris mentioned, I don't think should be taken lightly. As a freshman, now he didn't win MOP, highest, and that's right, but he was the best player on a national championship winning team as a freshman, the final title of Coach K's career. And when we talk about this list, you have to eliminate every day after that player finished college. That's not it's it's all about what you did when you were in college. To me, Okafor was the sixth best player. Can I mention my seventh and we'll compare it what's actually on the seventh list? Sure. Seventh. All right. I have Trey Young at seven. Consensus first team all American and the freshman of the year. The only player in the history of the sport to lead the country in points and assists, 27.4 points, 8.7 assists per game. He tied the, uh, the NCAA single game record for assists during that season. He also was the first player in more than two decades to have a 20 and 20 game. And Trey Young broke KD and then Beasley's freshman record for most points scored. He did flame out in the tournament. Flame out's really not totally kind. Rhode Island just it, it knocked him out, and so it ended the way it ended. And the final few weeks of his career, like they started going the wrong way. But Trey Young was an absolute sensation. It hit the point where ESPN, to the chagrin of many college sports fans, was having Trey Young trackers on its on its screens when non Oklahoma games were going on. All right, but Trey, when you lead the nation in points and assists, that is an all time one and done season to me. That's number seven. That's fine with me. Um, we're getting to the part of the list that I, I don't feel strongly about. I think you can. I think you could reasonably do these in a lot of different orders. But like, and Trey Young is on the 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 page of of reasonable people to put uh, right after Okafor at seven on the list that we published at CBSSports.com. 
Number seven is Derrick Rose. And I think that's wrong. I think that's too high. I have Derrick Rose 11th on my list. Yeah, I think seven's too high for Derrick Rose. talk Rose right now? Well, yeah. So, like, I lived through that, right? Um, you know, I was, I was around it every day. And the truth is, people remember Derrick Rose in the NCAA tournament, which was an all-time great run through the NCAA tournament. Go look at Derrick Rose's game log through the NCAA tournament. He ate people up. But he was not a consensus first team all American. He was not a consensus second team all American. He was a third team all American for most not people. Not even a consensus all American no. on the third team. Yeah. He averaged 14.9 points, 4.7 assists, 4.5 rebounds, 1.2 steals for a team that, you know, only lost twice and and made the national championship game. But Chris Douglas Roberts was the consensus first team all American off of that Memphis team. And I know this sounds stupid in hindsight. And it felt stupid in real time, but I can just tell you there were conversations happening in Memphis in certain parts early that season where people were wondering, should Andre Allen be starting at point guard instead of Derrick Rose? I acknowledge. I, I, I have faint memories, but I actually do remember that. That's that was it. Like it was a real, 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 I mean, it was a dumb conversation, but it was an actual conversation. It happened because like Derrick went through a stretch. It was a 12 game stretch, like December, January, I think where he was held to single digits six times in a 12-game stretch. And my recollection of that, like Derek's personality, because it wasn't like he went with a bunch of other five-star freshmen to Memphis and built this team. All these guys were 22, 23 years old. Yeah. Joey Dorsey was like 25. He was inhibited, right? He was an inhibited kind of guy. I, I believe he just tried to fit in for much of that season and just play his role and let the older guys do what they did. You know, Antonio Anderson, I don't have the – but I feel like Antonio Anderson was like 22. CDR was like 22. Joey was like 24. Dozier was like 22. It was Derrick Rose and a bunch of older guys. And he just, he was hesitant to just take off and take over. My understanding of what happened at some point is that this is at least what I was told is that John Calipari sat down with him right before the NCAA tournament and said, if we win a national championship, it will be because of you. Go. It's time to go. Stop deferring to your teammates. Take over. And that's when he took off. I mean, he was taking balls. I, I remember after Memphis beat whoever they beat in the Elite Eight, um, the following week, they were getting ready to play UCLA in the Final Four. And I was working on a column, and I got on the phone with Ben Howland. And, you know, it was normal stuff you know, at the beginning of any conversation, Hey, how you been? What's good? Congratulations on everything. And I said, so, uh, so what do you think? He said, Gary, I wish I could do a Ben Howland impression. Rostein actually has a great one. He's like, Gary, I'm telling you, I just watched this dude talking about Derek Rose, take the ball off the rim. And if you pause it, there are nine people between him and the other goal. And he beat every one of them down the court with the ball. He said, I've never seen – this is a different level guy. And I've told you the story about Antonio Anderson yeah. uh, telling me about when he first realized Derek was athletic, super – like a different level athlete. They were at the like this club, that which isn't far from me. I'm here at FedEx Forum now. And um, they got into a squirmish, as those guys tended to, to do back then. And apparently, like, Joey punched somebody or something. And uh, they were all, like, in the – outside patio area of the bar. And so they knew like they had been through this enough. Like once Joey punches somebody, we got to get out of there. This wasn't the first time <laughs> they, they, they had drilled for this. Yeah. And so Joey punches somebody and then everybody has to run from the patio through the bar to get out, to, you know, to their cars and go home. And Antonio is telling me the story. He said, GP, this is when I knew D Rose was different. It ain't when he was in the gym. It ain't nothing about basketball. He said, Joey hit this guy, and we all took off through the bar, and Derek just jumped over the fence on the patio, and he was waiting on us at the car, and we're like, D-Rose, how'd you get out of here so quick? He's like, I just jumped a fence. And they're like, Jump, climbed it? He's like, no, I just jumped it. He's like, GP, if you go look at this fence, you should not be able to jump it. And this dude just leaped over it, and that's when I knew Derek Rose was different. 
<laughs> if I ever write a book about that team, <laughs> that's where <laughs> that's where it would start. The fight at the, yes. the fight at the plush clay. Yeah, if you make a movie about that team, it starts with Joey Dorsey punching somebody and D Rose just sort of leapfrogging mm. a fence. He was a different dude. He was. Um, but he was not a top 10 all-time one and done. Player. No, I don't think so either. I would have him lower and and definitely lower than the guy that was eighth on the list that was published at CBSSports.com. And that's Greg Oden. Because G- Greg Oden was statistically better mm-hmm. and also went to the title game of the NCAA tournament just like Derrick Rose. So I would have Oden ahead of Rose, clearly. I've got Oden ninth on my list. Consensus second team All-American did not win freshman of the year because Durant won it. Okay. Um was a was a really good player. Remember, he had uh, wrist issues. Played thirty two out of thirty nine games that season. Ohio State was a one seed, lost in the title game. Averages fifteen point seven points, nine point six rebounds, eight point two win shares. A very good freshman whose placement on this list anywhere between honestly eight and fourteen, I think, is debatable. I've got him nine overall. And that means I have it eight. And if you've been watching on YouTube, you saw the name. Someone who did not make our list that needs to be on it. I've Mm -hmm. got John Wall eighth. Consensus first team All-American and the freshman of the year. 16 and a half points, six and a half assists, 4.3 rebounds. Remember what John Wall was in college? 1.8 steals for a 35 and three Kentucky team that was a one seed. Also had cousins, not on my list, but also would be in a top 20, I'm pretty sure of it, uh, helped the rebirth of, of UK basketball. That was Calipari's first season. He was a blur of a player. He was a ton of fun. I think it's borderline on our inarguable that John Wall is a top 10 one-and-done player. Uh, so I've got him eight. So I've got Trey Young eight. Or sorry, Trey Young seven, John Wall eight, Odin nine in that order. So when I was looking at the list that was published at CBSports.com, I had two... St- guys that I think could have reasonably put on the list, but I don't know exactly who I would take off. Just uh, for people who might be wondering, on our list, it went seven Derrick Rose, eight Greg Oden, nine Trey Young, 10 Lonzo Ball. And I uh, two guys that I think should be on there, and I would definitely, I think I would put them on there ahead of Lonzo. One is John Wall, for all the reasons you just mentioned. The other, Kevin Love. They're both on my list. Uh, we will, we will love is on my list. Um, you will have him higher than I do. We can get to love right now if you'd like. But I mean, I don't se- Kevin Love averaged 17 and a half points, 10.6 rebounds, shot 56% from the field for a team that made the final four. Yes. Yes. If, if you are, I, I didn't quite know where to put love. He was a consensus first teamer. I've got him 14th. All right. I put him 14th and I, the reason why I have Lonzo ball one higher because Lonzo won freshman of the year. Kevin Love did not. But Love had 23 double doubles, was the Pac 10 player of the year. For, uh, was his, oh, by the way, here's the out, outrageous thing. His win shares are 11.29. Now, if you're not familiar with the stat, go ahead and look up. I'm not going to, you know, bog this podcast down with that. Kevin Love has the best win share stat in all of college basketball since they tracked this in the mid 90s. He's right. number one. He's number one. So, if anything, I'm willing to listen to the argument that at 14, I have him too low. However, I'll explain. You'll understand why I've got a few guys ahead of him overall. But Kevin Love, um, yeah, man. And his story, and that's that's before I got to CBS, that's, I, I want to say the first time, I, I'm not even kidding. I think the first time I ever read Gary Parish, mm-hmm. I never even told GP, I'm almost positive it was like a Kevin Love column that you wrote. And it might have been around, remember he got really harassed by Oregon fans? That might have been it. But I, I'm almost positive that's, or at least that's the first time I can remember reading your byline. At what I, was the CBSSportsLine.com. But he was highly hyped and absolutely delivered. And I'm not even getting into the whole like full court chess pass shit. That just <laughs> seemed to be like half the story every time we talked about Kevin Love. In general, he was an incredible player, and the Final Four is no small thing. Yeah. Um, I spent a lot of time with Kevin back then. Um, it, there was one controversial deal. I think he played for like in a. <sighs> get it all confused now. But he played for maybe a Nike team on the grassroots circuit, but he wanted to go to Sonny's camp, Sonny Vaccaro's camp, the ABCD camp. And so he went against Nike's wishes. And this was like a big deal. Anyway, I end up at the Cheesecake Factory in Teaneck, New Jersey, or somewhere close to Teaneck, New Jersey, with Kevin and his family. Like I went to dinner with them uh, one day during the deal. And I just remember that they were on the phone nonstop with Nike and like bouncing back. Like Nike was still trying to get him to pull out. It was something It was, a, it was like a problem. It was a thing. So I remember that, um, went out. 
I went out to LA for one of the OJ Mayo Kevin Love games, uh, USC UCLA, and ended up at a Beach Boys concert with Kevin Love. Okay, that's a, not the Beach Boys I recognize. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brian wasn't there, but the Brian's other one. not there. I yeah, agree with. I agree with you. Started on that, but Kevin's uncle was there, and so and uh, who John Stamos played of course played drums. Of course. It was it was like it was a private like a private function in LA. And I forget how it happened. Like, I think his mom or his dad was like, Hey, why don't you just come to, you want to go to the beach boy show tonight? I do yeah. I don't, I don't. I don't I yeah. So how do you, how do you say no to that? Of course. And, then, and then me and me and Jeff Goodman one night played blackjack with Kevin, like till seven, like late, late, like nobody remembers getting up from the table. Um, so I've been around him a lot. I really like him. Um, but going back to what he was in college, I think, and I know I see here that you have Lonzo Ball ahead of Kevin Love. There's an argument to be made. I think I would have Kevin a, a, ahead of Lonzo. Okay, I'll get to Lonzo in a second, but I'll, I, we haven't talked about my guy on ten. So refresher: Trey seven, John Wall eight, Greg Ogan nine. I got Cade Cunningham at ten. Consensus oh, wow. first team All American, the freshman of the year. Like we, what national freshman of the year? I I I put a, an emphasis on that with a lot of players. Um, got Ohio, Oklahoma State to its best seed. In 16 years, averages 20.1 points per game, 6.2 boards, three and a half assists in a COVID impacted season, which I think is maybe affects it a little bit. Lost in the second round to Oregon State, not a great uh, exit, but that's the case with the number of the players on this. On this, um, it also like his play was so good, like it led to him being the no brainer number one pick. So, and he was tremendous. I, Kate Cunningham to me, it, it was not easy to put him 10th, but I edge, I have Derek Rose 11th, Kate Cunningham. To me, the entire package and what he did, I had him narrowly ahead of Derrick Rose at 11. Um, number 12, Marvin Bagley, the third consent mm -hmm. consensus first team All-American. Now, his career is a little bit uh, overshadowed because of what Zion did a year later. Uh, but consensus first team All-American, 21 points a game, 11 rebounds, 61.4% uh, shooter on a second seeded Duke team that lost in overtime to Kansas in the Elite Eight. And so many Duke freshman records that Bagley set again, Zion just knocked them all down a year later. Bagley was outrageous. He was extremely good. I've seen a couple mentions of RJ Barrett in the comments here. Bagley was a better one and done player in my estimation than Barrett. Barrett was literally my last cut. So I'm doing a top 15. Barrett was 16. Uh, you know, <laughs> just, the list gets crowded there. But I've got Kate at 10, Rose at 11, Bagley. I'll just finish this up, GP, and then you can take it. I've got Lonzo 13. And the reason why I haven't had a love was the freshman of the year. Led the nation in assists, 14.6 points per game, 6.0 rebounds, 1.8 steals. Shot, Lonzo Ball was a point guard. Shot 73% from two-point range on a third-seeded UCLA team that lost to Kentucky in the Sweet 16. I know, Kentucky fans, you want to have, like, in that post that we put up, that uh, our social team put up, there was a lot of, like, where's De'Aaron Fox? Hey, how about this? Malik Monk got second-team nods, not De'Aaron Fox, although I was higher on Fox the whole year. Those guys had wonderful one-and-done seasons. They Both of them, respectfully, did not have top 15 in my estimation. I've got Bagley 12. Lonzo 13 again consensus first team all american for Lonzo Kevin Love 14 consensus first team all american and then I've got another freshman of the year Jabari Parker consensus first team all american freshman of the year 19.1 points 8.7 rebounds on a duke team seated second that lost to Mercer in the first round of the tournament but I go Parker he was really really he was a really really good player just barely beating out RJ Barrett and then it pained me but ultimately I can't say he was a top 15 one and done player. I had Stephon Marbury. Those were my two closest cuts with shouts to guys like Fox, Monk, D'Angelo Russell, DeAndre Ayton. Like they were all very, very good. But my my list finishes out Rose, Bagley, Ball, Love, Jabari Parker. So I uh, I took the list that was published by CBSSports.com and, you know, 10 players. And Anthony Davis, Kevin Durant, Carmelo Anthony, all definite first ballot Naismith Memorial Hall of Famers. You agree with that, right? Yes. Can D Rose get there? MVP, three time All Star, 38 and two in college are just not enough. I think that is a fascinating debate. And I'm not, now it's the Naismith. It's everything. I'm right. not convinced he's going to be a first ballot guy. I'm not either. Um, but obviously, injuries derailed that. Um, on the injury related topic, Zion, 
is a byproduct of that right now. Mm-hmm. Greg Oden was undeniably an injury casualty. And it looks like Lonzo Ball might be one too. Yep. And then you get to guys who are good, but maybe not Hall of Fame good. But maybe we'll see. Still young, Trey Young. We'll see, right? Right. And then Okafor and Beasley were NBA bust. Uh, are those the only two of the yeah. ten that the the, 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 there, yeah. the list that, that, that the list? Probably, I would say yeah, those are the only two that and were then, actual like, bust for just for for playing. Then, reasons if you expand out my list um parker wasn't a bus he just wasn't what you know he was expected to be and then bagley and eh, jerry's Bagley, bagley's a bust he is yeah you want to bust him all right you bust i mean him. he is i mean what do you want to do i mean I, <laughs> no that's fine yeah, that's fine. yeah. i mean uh, i wish he wasn't i i was the one saying he should be the number yeah. one pick in the draft i would prefer him not to be a bust but he he clearly is i and to anyone that's listening to this probably under the age of takes 33 or 34 um stefan marbury was freaking just he was he was he was tune in factor immediately um and i remember him going to the nba and that being the first time and you know i was a young young kid back then but i watched him and thinking like why is he going he just like he's going already like, this isn't what's supposed to happen and then that's you know you kind of learn things as you uh as you grow up if you will and that's when i started learning oh he's going because he's going to make a lot of money and he doesn't have to stay in college for his second year so um Marbury would rank among my six or seven favorite one and done players to watch in general, but statistically he's just not quite there. But uh, my thanks to Carmelo Anthony for choosing this week to retire. It's a relatively slow one. We're getting to a college hoops news in a second here, but I did enjoy, I mean, I, I, I thought about this for a good two, three hours. I kind of dug in when did a few uh, YouTube dives GP and uh, it's obviously highly debatable. And we will, I know that there will be, um, particularly Duke and Kentucky fans because they have the most of these that want to get in here and, and rearrange the order. But if you really take into account and kind of blend it all, their accomplishments, freshman of the year awards, stats, what they, you know, how good they were. I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty comfortable with my list. I wonder if Kate at 10 is going to be somewhat semi-controversial. But That's the one I like. He wasn't, I mean, I'm not saying he shouldn't have been on my he radar. Flashy. One freshman of the year, consensus first team All American, really good stat line, and his program got his best seat. It hadn't been a four seed or better in 16 years. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not saying he shouldn't have been on my radar. I'm just saying when I was looking at the list and thinking of yeah. people who weren't on the top 10 list at CBSports.com, I never even thought of him. He, he like, he genuinely, he just did not pop into my head. Yeah. And I think part of that's because he just, just of his game. So I'm, um, hey, listen, I'm open to, I'm open to feedback, but, uh, but there we have it. 